This week, I'm in the glorious Lake District National Park. And of course, when you come to a place like this, it's always good to have a guide. And my guide is going to be this river that rises in the hills just there and flows down through the beautiful Borrowdale Valley. This is the Derwent River. Despite the fact that almost 15 million tourists come to the Lake District each year, there are parts like this which remain truly wild. Borrowdale is England's wettest valley. Its beauty has inspired poets. The isolation has let nature take hold in a spectacular way, creating a unique array of habitats. Here I will be journeying from the high fells along the beautiful River Derwent to open water through ancient rainforests taking in the flora and fauna, birds and insects, that call this magnificent valley home. But of course, it is the Lake District, and I am anticipating some rain. The first stop on my journey is at the head of the valley. These are the intriguing Borrowdale yews. They are some of the oldest trees in Europe. Tests date the branches at 1,500 years old, suggesting the trunks may be up to 2,000 years old, which means that these trees have been here since before the Romans arrived. Wow, if that could speak. This is part of a tiny grove of yew trees that were known as the Fraternal Four, as Wordsworth named them. Very, very special to be around such ancient living things. We always think of yew trees associated with cemeteries, but of course, many of the yew trees in Britain were associated with worship long before the arrival of Christianity. And when I look up into the branches, I feel as though I'm in a place of worship. It reminds me of being in a church. They are, though, the tree of life and the tree of death. Just about every part of this tree is poisonous. And yet, today, Chemists have found that they can take the poisons found in the trimmings of the branches and use that to treat soft tissue cancers. But this place is dominated by another tree, so much so that it gave the river its name. Derwent is a Celtic word meaning valley thick with oak. I'm meeting National Trust woodland ranger Morris Pankhurst. It's his job to protect these rare and precious forests, which up until 500 years ago would have covered much of Western Europe. But now Johnny Wood is one of our few remaining rainforests. Because this is rainforest, isn't it? It is, yeah, we are, we are, we are <laughs> literally in rain. Rainforest, yeah, <laughs> literally today. Because it's wet, which will explain the occasional spot of rain on the lens. <laughs> very wet, very wet indeed. <laughs> It qualifies as rainforest because it has over three metres of rain a year, creating a humid, moist environment which supports hundreds of life forms. This wood has international recognition and has the highest tier of protection afforded to habitats in Europe, but it's not thanks to the trees. Right, well, you just look round the woodland, look round the woodland floor, look at, look at the trunks of the trees. There's one thing that they have in common. It's these chaps, the mosses, or if you want to give them their correct name, the bryophytes. There are 154 species of moss and liverwort. Gosh, that's astonishing. Okay, 154. And in the ecosystem as a whole, the mosses here, they're holding moisture, aren't they? They're creating habitat for microfauna. They're really important. Indeed, yeah. They're a micro habitat for a massive, massive range of invertebrates, which in turn are, of course, a food source for many of the bird populations that live in and around us. So they are as important as these big chaps, the trees. Morris has promised to share another treasure further down the valley. But first, as the rain eases off, I want to experience the heartbeat of this place, the river itself. I'm travelling along the river from its source high up in the fells and onto Derwent Water Lake. 
In just six miles, the river transforms from trickling stream through rushing waters before opening out onto the lake. Wow, the river is really tranquil today. It's so peaceful, it's heavenly. But it's not always that way. I can see by the amount of detritus and debris on the shore that this river floods at times, and quite seriously so, only to be expected in the mountains. But today, it's calm and beautiful. If only Wordsworth was in this boat now, he'd have the words for it. All the wild garlic here, the white flower on the bank there. Let's go and have a look at that. A lot of people know this plant. It's very easy to identify because it's got an incredibly pungent aroma. I personally don't like the leaves for food. I find them too strong flavoured. What I do like are sprinkling the flowers like this into a salad. And they're quite strong, so you don't need too many of them. They're much nicer. It's a more subtle flavour. It's a member of the onion family, and so you can use the juice from that as, a, as an antiseptic if you need to. But you have to know what you're doing when it comes to wild plants. You just can't go out and munch anything. And growing right beside it is an incredibly toxic plant. This is hemlock water dropwort. All parts of that plant are poisonous, and they're lethally so. It's a very dangerous plant. It's not a plant you should handle or play with and certainly never eat. Back on dry land, and Morris is keen to take me high up on the fells, where one tiny species is busy making its home. Borrowdale has the biggest population of Britain's largest ant. And at 12 millimetres long, they are four times bigger than the common house ant. This is the, the northern hairy wood ant, Formica okay. lugubris. So it's, it's not only the biggest ant in the British Isles, but it builds the biggest yeah. nests. Yeah. The largest we've recorded is eight and a half metres across. Eight and a half Eight and a half metres across, it's yeah. massive. And of course, this is like the iceberg. This is a third. Yeah. So you've got another 66% below you. We may have half a million yeah. in this nest alone. Yeah. It's astonishing, isn't it? Yep, yep. Everybody's busy in an ant hill. Yeah. There are several nests like this in the area, and these creatures have a remarkable way of protecting themselves. We've got to do the trick here. I've got a, a bluebell, so we see what happens with the... We yeah. get them to squirt their, their defence, their formic acid, onto the, to the flower here. It doesn't have a, a poisonous bite, but it sprays a lot of formic, formic acid. acid. Look at that. When is a bluebell not a bluebell? When it's... When the wood ants have sprayed it. Nature's litmus paper. That is a lot of formic acid. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like getting a nose full of vinegar. It's like being in a chip shop, Ray. It is. I, I was once tracking, and I bumped into one of these nests, and I got an absolute faceful, and it floors you. Yep. So for you know, a badger coming along, something like that, it's a pretty effective defence. Mm. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> these ants feast on other insects and worms. They're one of the woodland's best predators, each day bringing back up to 50 times their own body weight in food to the nest. Here we have a, a carnivore in, in miniature. It doesn't matter where you are, Africa, South America, India, you will always find it is ants that are harvesting the most protein out of a system. Even more protein than lions and tigers, simply because of their numbers. There's another food surrounding the nest. Oh, you got it? Pignut is a member of the carrot family, and its root is a rare source of wild carbohydrate. It's a forager's dream. Oh, yeah, you oh, have oh, oh, thank you very much. I'll munch away on that. Good day. What, what I think mm, is, is good. Mm. What I think is really interesting about this plant is that perhaps in the Paleolithic, the old Stone Age, when there were grasslands, there could have been swathes of pignut. And this may well have been one of the staple foods of our ancestors at that time. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot, lot to understand. It's time for me to head back down to the river and I catch a fleeting glimpse of one of the treasures of Borrowdale, the peregrine falcon. 
I'm determined to see these magnificent birds of prey close up before I leave the valley. I'm here in the Lake District, using the Derwent River as my guide to explore the breathtaking Borodell Valley. I'm now just a mile away from the lake and the river is widening as it snakes down through the valley. Much of this river is protected as it's considered to be home to some of the very best wildlife sites in the country. Oh, oh, lovely. I'm going to come in here. Now I've stopped here because one of the real joys of rivers as habitats is just across on the other bank there. You can see a lot of holes in the river bank here and those are sand martin nests. And that's one of my favorite things to see on a river. And uh, they're really quite active. I might stop here for a moment and just watch. Sand martins are the smallest member of the swallow family and get their name because they burrow into sandy riverbanks like this one to nest. It's really special to see so many because these little birds suffered a catastrophic decline in numbers when severe drought hit the parts of Africa they migrate to in winter. Their numbers are now, thankfully, beginning to climb again. It's a wonderful thing to see. That's just lovely. The river may look tame, but all waterways have their dangers, even on a calm day like this. You have to be careful when you see vegetation like this. Trees across rivers are dangerous. It's an understatement. British rivers can be just as treacherous as those elsewhere in the world. If you want to explore them by canoe and are not experienced, you must use a guide. I've been doing this for decades, but on a stretch of water that's unfamiliar to me, even I can get caught up. While I dry off a bit, it's a perfect opportunity to enjoy some of the bird life from a less perilous position. Rivers are always great places to spot birds. They're a wildlife corridor in the landscape, a kind of conveyor belt of food. But the Derwent River is special. Thanks to the varied and protected habitats here, the river teems with perching birds. Wagtails are lovers of riverbanks like this. In spite of its name, this grey wagtail is actually very colourful and can often be seen beside fast-flowing mountain rivers. The black and white pied wagtail is pretty sociable, but they can be tricky to spot, especially in the rain. One bird that doesn't mind getting wet is the dipper. This small, plump bird gets its name from its distinctive bobbing movements. They use rocks and branches to peer into the waters below before using their unique talent. Dippers are the only perching bird that hunt underwater. They can walk or swim underwater for up to 30 seconds. But there's one more bird I'm determined to see. To do that, I'll need to get back in my canoe to journey further down the river and onto Derwent water. One of the great things about traveling on rivers is feeling the changing mood. And I've come through that beautiful piece of riverine woodland, stunning wildflowers all along the banks, some mallards here. But now I've got pasture coming down to the river banks, the mountain stretching out before me. I feel that we're coming towards open water. The author, Alfred Wainwright, wrote extensively about the Lake District and considered Borodell to be its finest valley. And I have to agree. This is wonderful. It's not something you see every day in Britain. The river here forms a proper delta. And uh, we've got this 
wonderful marshland, wetland habitat. Really, really good environment, extremely good for wildlife. And I think that's really the, the key to Britain's future with wildlife, is to make sure that special places retain their special nature. These mallards just don't want to uh, take off. They're happy with me as long as I'm a boat length away. They're just skipping ahead of me. That's great. <laughs> nature is absolutely at the core of human existence. And sometimes I think we forget that. But not when you're canoeing. And here we are. Derwent water, isn't that beautiful? You know, when I look at these islands covered in trees, I think it's not too far from Canada. That's exactly how it feels to travel through the Canadian lake systems, real wilderness. But for the moment, I think my journey by canoe is at an end out here. I have one final leg to my Borrowdale expedition, and one I hope will be a real delight. I'm heading high up above the lake with National Park Officer Peter Barron, along a path that's a closely guarded secret. This part of the Lake District is one of the best places in Britain to see peregrine falcons. Getting close enough and high enough to see into a falcon's nest is an extremely rare treat. Just need to sneak up over the brow a little bit. and we're rewarded with an incredible sight. Here, there we go. That, is, yeah. that must be... That's the female. Is that the female? Yeah. That female that's on the nest now is actually brooding chicks. The chicks have actually hatched. So she's been sat on them for roughly a month. And she goes... So she's nestling them, yeah. down on them at once. They've been fed. Yeah. She's picking up the bits. <laughs> she's cleaning the table. Yep. Yeah. That's a fantastic view. I mean, it's not very warm, it is drizzling, so, you know, she needs to keep those chicks. Looks like she warm. is aware of us, actually, doesn't it? I mean, they're quite discreet nests, aren't they? They're not known as great nest builders, are they? They don't really do anything, I don't think. <laughs> no. They just plonk on a, on yeah. a, on a ledge and, and... Actually, they make quite a mess. Um, there's a lots of uh, debris and bones and, and what you have actually, you left at the end You of, can actually see that in front see of bits and pieces, can't Yeah, you? you can, yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Beautiful bird. Peregrine falcons are consummate hunters. Their huge feet and talons mean they can strike, kill and hold their prey with absolute precision. They are also one of the fastest animals in the world. Well, they've got the reputation of being the fastest the fastest killer, haven't they, really? Yeah. And uh, 200 miles an hour is oft quoted, awesome. or more. So uh, they are fantastic, yeah. It's gone. But these proficient predators are under threat themselves. In the past, their eggs have been stolen from this and other sites. They can fetch hundreds of thousands of pounds on the black market. A pet falcon is a valued prize in some parts of the world. As a consequence of that predation by humans, local people have absolutely taken those birds and what was happening them to, to heart. And this, this site we're at now has been watched by local people since the 70s. I mean, that's the best way, localised, yeah. local knowledge, yeah. perfect. Yeah, and in a way, that uh, persecution which was occurring actually prompted the local people to do something yeah. and, uh, and watch them and be interested in them. So, you know, maybe sometimes good comes out of bad. All I can say is, well done, the people of Keswick. Absolutely. Let's hope that those who want these eggs go elsewhere to find them, or better still, rear their own. Well, the Lake District really hasn't disappointed in fact, it makes me think I don't come here often enough. It's so beautiful. 
The River Derwent, what an incredible guide that's been. It unites the two great features of this landscape, the mountains within which it rises and the lake that it flows into. And along the way, all that wonderful habitat. I'm gonna take away strong memories of the vegetation on the riverbanks, the dippers, the sand martins and wagtails. But my highlight has to be the peregrine falcon testimony to what a community can do when they unite to protect wildlife from those who would do it harm. Next time I'll be exploring the majestic Isle of Skye in search of Britain's largest bird of prey, the sea eagle. This is as good as anything you'd see on the Serengeti. And I'll be out on the water looking for a very special new arrival. Is that the pup there? It is. Look how tiny that is. Isn't that magic? Time.